Hello everyone out there in YouTube land. This is the Green Commander with Army Man Wargaming. I'm here with another tutorial for you. Uh, you may have noticed that we recently did a video about Lennard's The Core Elite Playset. And in it, there were several sections of barbed wire fencing. Uh, this looks like a more stable, sort of a standard security fence with some, uh, some barbed wire here across the top. And there were also a few panels of what look like more like improvised fences, you know, it's sort of crooked and the barbed wire sort of all over the place. But the problem with using these in a war game is that they're very light, they fall over very easily, they'll often not stay where you put them, and a lot of them, like this for example, you can see it sort of has a pronounced bend in it. So one way that war gamers will correct this problem is they'll take these plastic pieces and affix them to wooden bases and then paint them. And so this tutorial is going to be about how you take something that's like this and turn it into something more appropriate for a war gaming table. So I suppose it's time for us to look at some materials and then we'll get started. So here are the materials that you're going to need for the most basic elements of this tutorial. You're going to need the fence sections that you're going to be basing. And for this particular tutorial, we're going to use something a little bit lighter. I wanted something flatter with a low profile. We're going to use these for an urban warfare game. So we're going to use simple popsicle sticks. And these are available at a craft store. You can get hundreds of them for just a couple of dollars US. So that's very reasonably priced. We're going to need some sand, and a lot of war gamers use play sand. For me, I actually like the sand that they use for paving stone driveways. Uh, it's actually less expensive than play sand, but unlike play sand, which has a standard size grain through the entire thing, you'll see there's a number of larger rocks, different grades and shapes of rock that's in this particular sort of sand, which I think gives a more natural look when you're finished. We're going to use some masking tape. We're definitely going to need some white glue, PVA glue, and some spray paint for basing, some paint brushes, and at its most basic, some sort of brown paint, some sort of gray paint, and some sort of black paint. Now, depending on how fancy you want to get, there's also some optional items you can get. I have here, this is from a craft store, it's a bag of medium-sized rocks. Some war gamers will also go even cheaper and just use aquarium gravel. You may also find at model railroad shops or craft stores, they call this stuff clump foliage. Now, really, all it is... Uh, it's green sponge that's had paint soaked through it. And it sort of sticks together in clumps. And you can glue this stuff onto tree armatures or make shrubs with it or whatever other plant-like effect you're trying to achieve, you can use this sponge. Model railroad stores also have this stuff that they call lichen. And you can see as you bring it forward, this is something that you can pull out and you can stretch this into different sorts of configurations to make it look like ground cover, like lichens. Also, we're going to have to look at some fancier paint colors. Um, some lighter tans will be useful if you want to texture and do any highlighting or dry brushing on the bases, if you want something that looks more outdoorsy. Uh, some rust, if we want to rust our fence up, so this nice red oxide color is good for that. Um, a simple tan is also useful, and I'd like to also point out, this being an acrylic craft paint, this is far less expensive than the Liquitex version. The less expensive a paint is, the less pigment it has, and the more coats that you will need. So something like this will work in a pinch, although I tend to gravitate toward the middle quality latex paints for my terrain. So, anyway, this is the overview of the materials that you'll need, and we'll move forward. I guess we'll just get started on the project. All right, we are prepared to begin.
Actually, I've already done a first step that I think is vitally important that I speak to you about. As you can see, each of these fence sections is made from plastic. And the process that they use to make these is called injection molding. They're going to heat up the plastic, inject it into a mold. Then as the plastic cools, it conforms to the shape of the mold. And then you will have a finished section of barbed wire fencing. The problem is that part of this manufacturing process involves coating the inside of the mold with a mold release agent, which will prevent the plastic from sticking to the mold. However, the mold release agent stays on the plastic after it's produced, and just as it prevented the mold from sticking to the plastic, it will also prevent paint or glue from sticking to the plastic. So before you do anything else, get an old toothbrush, get some laundry detergent or some dishwashing soap, give it a good bath, rinse it, let it air dry. Now the next thing that we have to do is figure out how we're going to base these. So there's a number of different basing materials that you can use. Uh, for this particular case, I'm going to use these particular fence sections in an urban setting. So I'm not going to put ground texture or anything on the bases. I want them to look very clean. So I'm simply going to use a popsicle stick for that. However, I have also seen war gamers use quarter inch thick foam core like the presentation boards. I've seen people use cardboard, although with both the foam and the cardboard, be careful if you coat it with glue because that'll cause it to warp. I've seen guys use plexiglass. Um, I've even used scrap pieces of very thin plywood or laminate. All those things are good too. Basically you want something that is hard and flat that will help keep this fence section stable so it doesn't get knocked over as easily during the game. So then when it comes time for us to mount these, these actually are fairly straight, but you can see, actually I'm not sure how good my camera is, but we're gonna make an effort. You can see how it's not really a straight line there. It kind of curves off to one side. Some of these are worse than others. I mean, this one's a lot more pronounced if you, ooh, which way do I gotta go? Wow. You wouldn't think I would be outsmarted by a camera like this. There we go. That's the look I wanted. You can see how it has that bend to it. It's not required, but I do like to have straight fence sections. So what we're going to do, sort of like a broken bone, we're actually going to splint popsicle sticks around these fence sections. So I've torn off a few pieces of masking tape, and I just kind of have them off to the side here. So, all right, that looks fairly good. So we'll take one piece of masking tape and wrap it around this end. And we'll take another piece of masking tape and wrap it around this end. And now you can see that our crooked fence has some basically straight basically straight line now, which is what we're shooting for. So I'm going to splint out the rest of these, and then we'll get going with the next step. All right, so all six of our fence sections have been splinted so that they're nice and straight. Another step, not entirely mandatory, something that I do recommend. I'm sorry I didn't include this in the beginning, but you need something to roughen the bottom of where these fence posts are going to be touching your base. Now for me, I'm just gonna use an old wood file. It's fairly simple and doesn't take a ton of time and effort to do. You just wanna make sure that it's rough. It'll help to give the glue something to grab onto. When you're working with popsicle sticks, they're already porous and the white glue will work with those very well. If you don't have a wood file like this, you can also get away with using an emery board or sandpaper or a nail file. Virtually anything rough enough to scratch the plastic would work. I mean, I suppose if push came to shove, you could even chew it up a little bit with like a razor knife or a utility knife. But I found this method to be fairly easy and fairly quick and very effective. So we're just about done with that. Yep, that'll work. All right, so we'll get this out of the way. We'll get this out of the way. We're going to bring back our glue. And we're probably gonna need about a half dozen of these sticks. 
Another thing about popsicle sticks is that not all sticks in the same package are created equal. Most of them are flat, but you will want to take a quick look to make sure that there aren't any major warps or cracks or defects in them. Uh, there's a half dozen that I like. So now we're just going to take our glue and we're going to put a little bit of this. I do like this Aileen's Tacky Glue. It's available at AC Moore and other craft stores. But I find it to be very effective. It stays right where you put it, which is something that I rather like. So the next step then is to glue and try to center it as best you can on the stick. And it also helps to turn your work. And look, so yeah, we're pretty far off center here. So that looks good. Yeah, okay, so that's one that we like. So we finished our first one. So the next step then is to glue all six of them. And while we're not going to texture these, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use these for an urban game. These are going to be sitting on top of pavement, so I'm not going to put ground texture around them. But I do have some fence sections from another project that would be on ground that I'll show you how the texturing works for that. So uh, let me get these glued up, and then we'll move on from there. Very well. If you intend to put a ground texture around the base of the fence, it's time for us to glue our sand, or in this case, our paving sand mix, onto the base itself. Now, it turns out that I don't actually have any barbed wire sections in need of this, but I can show you the technique on almost anything, and I found a cow. And you can tell by looking, this is a fine cow because it has both horns in the front, and yet, it also has an udder. So this is both a cow and a bull at the same time, which tells you how versatile the livestock is here at Army Men Wargaming. Ah, it's utterly disappointing. Ah, a little bit of cow humor there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our glue, and we're going to apply some of it onto the base. Assuming our glue wants to cooperate. Okay, there we go. And then you're going to want to spread it around. And in this case, we're just going to use an old paintbrush. And you paint it around, being careful not to get it on anything that you don't want ground stuck to, right? So we're going to be painting, in this case, around this animal's hooves. But if you get any on the animal's hooves, then the mud is going to be climbing up there, which is the opposite of what you want. All right, so now we have plenty of wet glue here around our base, and all you do is immerse it and press down on it a little bit. Tap off the excess, and there's our finished base, and you can see that we have a nice ground texture all the way around that, which will match the ground texture of the battle board that we play the game on. So, if you wanted to see how this works with regard to finished fence pieces, I guess we'll, uh, here, we'll release our, we're going to release our cow. I'm going to get our sand out of the way. These are some barbed wire pieces that came with a different set. And you can see, if I can get this close enough, that there's rocks of a few different sizes. It has like a really nice texture to it. And so I have a few of these, and I also didn't particularly like the way they line up well enough side to side. But when you try to do a corner, there's really no way for a corner to exist without a gap. So I made these just out of some pieces of wood dowel and bamboo skewers. And we're just going to put those at the corners. Just an artistic conceit on my part, but what we'll do next is we have to both seal in this glue that we just placed on it. And also, we need a nice dark base coat so that when we paint it, if we make any mistakes, 
you'll have an undercoat of black paint, so it'll just look like shadow if you miss a spot. So, regardless of whether you've chosen to texture your bases or not, the next step is black spray paint. This is going to serve as our base coat. Now, there are some modelers that prefer to use white, because if you use white paint, the paints that you put over it appear brighter and more robust. But if you miss a spot, then there's an area that is white that really sticks out, and they can see that you missed. So I prefer to use black, because then if I miss a spot, it just looks like shadow and nobody knows that I've missed. So once everything's dry, we're going to give it a coat or two, of this black spray paint and in this particular version this one bonds to plastic it is important that you look for that because not all spray paints will adhere to plastic and then when you begin handling the pieces on your game board pieces will flake off and your paint job won't be very robust and if you want to stand up to hours of wargaming you should definitely get something that bonds to plastic. All right, so we're going to go give these things a base coat, and I'll coat these right along with the ones that we were doing earlier so you guys can see the process from both sides. All right, I guess i got to get outside and get these painted. So here you can see we've given all of our fence sections as well as our corner pieces and even this small gate that I made from a broken piece. All of them have been given a base coat of black spray paint. That's going to be, I guess, a like priming coat, if you want to call it that. This way, if I miss any spots, any missed spots will just appear as black and will kind of blend in like shadow. It isn't as obvious as, say, priming in white or in gray. We have two different types of bases here, as you'll remember. We have this grouping here, which I plan on putting on a concrete sort of surface. So for them, I'm just going to paint the bases gray, and I'll probably paint the wires gray on the barbed wire here. May even add some rust on these because they look a little bit banged up. This, I'll probably just do a little bit of light gray dry brushing. We're going to get to that later. Over here on the right side of the screen, this is more like barbed wire fencing in the field. I've textured it in the same way that I texture the ground on most of my terrain features. So we'll be painting all of those bases first, then we're going to go over the wire in gray, and then I'm going to add wire on these corner pieces that I constructed. So I suppose we'll probably get started with the concrete ones first, and you'll use a mixture of acrylic paints for this. Uh, I'll primarily do the gray with this latex house paint that I have laying around in that particular shade, which is helpful. You could also use something a little thicker. This stuff has more of a buttery consistency to it, though, so you'll probably have to thin it out. Another option would just be to use simple acrylic craft paint, something like this. In that situation, you'll need multiple, multiple coats of it because there's not a lot of pigment in inexpensive craft paints. So I suppose what we'll do is we'll just start by painting these. So I'll get this other stuff off the table for now, and then we'll move forward from there. All right, so we've assembled the materials that we need. You can see here we have some of our latex paint. We have some water for cleanup. We have several different kinds of brushes and the bases that we intend to paint. I think I'm going to begin with these rougher barbed wire pieces. And we'll try a middle-sized brush. Um, we'll paint through one just to give you an idea of what the finished piece will look like. And we'll do the same thing with one of the, uh, the better-looking fences over here. These don't look quite as improvised or weathered. And then we'll cut the video. I'll paint up the rest, and then we'll move forward from there. All right, so you'll see here, I only planned on keeping these cross pieces color black, and the rest of it will be gray. 
So rather than try and be delicate and paint around all of the cross pieces, I just slather on the gray as deeply as I thought I needed to. And then after I'm done getting the gray correct and getting the rust correct and everything else, then I'll go back over it and touch it up with black for a finished piece. So this is our first coat here on our concrete based stuff. Okay, welcome back. It's time for us to get going on these pieces that look newer and not as battered. My plan for these is just to paint the bases gray and then we'll do a technique called dry brushing on the black just to bring that out. So we're going to start painting here. I'll speed that up and then I'll show you where to go from here. Very well, now the base of this one is finished. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the basis of all the other concrete ones. And then we'll get going on some shading and dry brushing for the improvised wire barricades. And then we're also going to do some dry brushing on these more polished, newer looking fences. Since I was last at the bench, I did a little bit of base coating on the wires for these fence sections that we're basing on earth. You can see that I painted them a light gray color. And then I did some shading, which was a technique I intended to demonstrate next, but I found that the quality of my camera is a little bit too low to really show the details on something as small as these wire sections. So instead, I'm going to do base coating on all this ground texture, which I think show up better on the camera. So. We're going to do a quick paint job of a base coat on this earth texture, and then I'm going to show you how to shade it. So, again, some house paint, a little bit of water and brushes for cleanup, and we're going to get started. All right, so we finished up this particular base coat. So I'm going to go ahead and put a base coat on all the rest of our earth-mounted fence sections. And as soon as this dries, I'll come back and I'll show you guys how to shade it. As you can see, we've placed a sand-colored base coat on the earth bases that we've made for these fence sections. And while the base coat in and of itself looks good, you can't really make out the finer details, the smaller rocks, the textures, those sorts of things, which will really help make your battlefield terrain look realistic. So one of the techniques that modelers will use is to artificially add shadows and highlights to accentuate them, in fact, so that when a viewer is looking at them from a distance, that those details will really pop out. So the first step is to paint in some artificial shadows. You can do this with commercially produced washes. Most commonly, I just thin out acrylic paint with water. So we're going to get a palette that we can do some mixing with. We're going to bring out some burnt umber acrylic paint. Burnt umber is just a dark brown color. Any color that suits your project will be fine. So we're just going to put a dollop of this stuff inside of the palette. And then we're going to add some water. I've found that making smaller batches of this stuff is more effective. Because if you take like a large container, say from yogurt or something like that, and then begin painting with it, a lot of the particles, the pigments that were in the paint will settle to the bottom of the container and you'll end up with a really light colored wash at the start of your project and dark splotches at the end. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to use the tip of an old brush and we're just going to mix this up until it goes to the consistency we want. You kind of want the consistency of say whole milk. All right, <clears throat> I guess we'll just get started on painting. This is extremely watery stuff. And so what we want is for the pigment of the darker shade to fill in the low spots on the areas that you painted more lightly.
We're going to give this an opportunity to dry. I'm going to go shade the rest of these, and then we'll take a look at it when it's all finished. So we finished up painting in the shading on the bases for our ground-based fence sections. And I left the gate unshaded just so that we can take a look at the difference in detail that just painting in a watered down darker shade can accomplish. So we're just going to zoom in a little bit here and take a closer look. And you can see how the rocks and even the bases of the posts stand out. It's much more pronounced than it would be if you simply painted it the base color alone, as you'd see in the example above. So, after all of these are completely dry, we'll move on to dry brushing, and we'll do both dry brushing texture on our surfaces here, as well as on the fences themselves. Work has progressed apace here at the workbench, and we have all of our fence sections that are rooted in an earth texture completely shaded. So as you can see here, by looking at our gate piece, if I slide this out of the way, you might be able to get a better look at the way the diluted darker shade seeped down into the crevices between the rocks and really helped to create a shadow effect in the texture. The next step is to create highlights in the texture. In order to do this, you need a few materials and... Um, in order to do this, you only need a handful of things. You'll need a scrap of cloth, that will become important later. You're going to need some water for cleanup, that will also be used later. You're going to need an old brush. Oldest, cheapest brush you can find, because this technique ruins brushes. So don't pay, spend a lot of money on a quality brush and destroy it doing this. Uh, lastly, you're going to need another shade of paint. Now, in this case, I'm using a same kind of house paint that I use for my base coat. You may notice, though, that this is lighter than the color that I originally painted the base of this gate. This is intentional. You have a base color that will show through everything. Then you will have a diluted light darker color that will produce the shadows. Then you're going to drag a lighter color just across the highest points of the texture, and that creates the highlights. So this is the way that this technique works. You will begin by putting your brush into the paint and pulling it out, not wiping off any of the excess paint on the side of a paint pot or anything else. You just have this glob of paint. The next thing you do is you take your towel. You'll then pinch it and pull it out. You may also decide that you want to make a few strokes just to get the last of the paint, or what appears to be the last of the paint, off the brush. So now you have a brush that is largely full of dry paint, which is why they call this technique dry brushing. I'm just going to step this up out of the way. So. The way that dry brushing works, or some modelers will also call it overbrushing, is you lightly drag this dry brush across the high points of your piece. And as you do this, you'll see, for example, that this rock I just painted really pops out now, compared to the rest of it. So you'll do a little bit of dry brushing on an area, and then as soon as you see that you're not getting any more results, it's time for another glob of paint. So we're just going to put this into time lapse. I'll dry brush this one, then we'll talk a little bit more about the result. Very well, we're finished. And while that was time lapse, you could probably tell it wasn't very long. It only takes about a minute to dry brush a piece like this. So by way of comparison, we're going to have this shade here. And I did leave one fence section undry brushed just so we can compare the difference. And you can see the difference in how these high points really, really become visible. And that's important because on a war games table, you're not going to be looking at these things with a magnifying glass, and when the details really pop out, it will look much more realistic, even if, when you look at it very closely, you can tell that the shades are really, really pronounced. So I'm just going to finish dry brushing this last piece, 
and uh, then I'll show you how to dry brush on the pieces that we're setting into a concrete style base. So now it's time for us to use the same technique on this fence section, which we placed on a base that's supposed to simulate concrete. Now an interesting thing about this base is that everything is painted black, so obviously you don't put shadows on black. On something like this, you just put highlights. So we're going to do the same technique we did before. You start off with your brush. You dip it in a lighter shade of the color that your base is. This gray is obviously lighter than black. So we're going to get a large dollop of gray paint. We're going to come back and use our towel from last time. Wipe off the excess. And then you begin dragging the brush across the high points. And what we really want to do is we want to bring out the details of these smaller pieces of barbed wire. You see how that sort of comes out. And then you can also drag downward on most of these cross sections. Purists who are doing this sort of thing will generally only shade in a downward direction, assuming that the light is coming from above and that you'll have highlights in weird places if you shade in an upward direction. It simply depends on how much detail you want and how you want that to look. I think I dry brushed a little bit too heavy on this top section because the wires actually look a little gray. And I suppose barbed wire does look gray, so maybe it isn't that big of a deal. But as you look at the cross pieces here that we've done, from a distance further out, you can make out more of those details compared to another section where everything is just black. So anyway, that's what that specific technique looks like. Uh, we'll do the same thing for all of our other pieces. We'll be done with shading, and then it's going to be time for us to move on and just do a little bit of foliage, and then we'll be finished with our project. So an interesting problem emerged when I was dry brushing the barbed wire on these fence sections that we've textured with earth bases. You can see here we have barbed wire in this fence section. We have barbed wire in this fence section. But in the corner piece, which you remember that we scratch built, there's no barbed wire. So we have to come up with something. Now fortunately for me, I happen to have a roll of this picture framing wire. This is the stuff that goes on the back of a picture frame. You can buy a spool of probably 20 or 30 feet of it for just a few dollars at the hardware store. So all we're going to do, because if you look, the thickness of the wire, it is a little thick for barbed wire at 135th or 54 millimeter scale. But you can see it's about as thick as the wire on our plastic fences. So all we're going to do, and I'm not, this is so simple I'm not even going to bother doing it on camera, is I'm just going to attach one end of it with some super glue, and I'm just going to wrap it around the post and all three connectors. What you end up with is something like this. And you'll see that sort of matches our corner a lot better than the piece with no barbed wire. Although it is a little bit bright. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to take a, a dark wash, kind of like what we use to texture our earth, and then we're just going to dull the shine on that a little bit. I'm not going to bother going through painting and dry brushing it. So we'll get that taken care of, and that's pretty much the last step. So I'll have this shaded, and after I get this shaded, we'll just lay out all of our fence sections, and that should be the end of our tutorial. So... As you can see, our corner pieces are finished. Uh, I've applied a simple dark wash to the barbed wire that we improvised on the corner pieces. It's not a perfect match, but it's close enough for what we do here at Army Men Wargaming. I think you'll agree that these pieces are far more stable and probably more aesthetically pleasing than the simple gray plastic that we started with. That was the whole function behind doing this particular tutorial. So. We're just going to take a quick look here at what our finished barbed wire pieces, if they are set on an earth base. And here's a look at the finished pieces for our urban project, those fence sections that we're going to have placed on concrete backgrounds. 
And here's a look at all the finished fence sections showing both the concrete bases as well as the earth style bases. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like it, please click the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.